we're ready to go. Let's do this. I love the touch, like touch and tone on piano takes a really, really long time to develop. That's really tough um, because you need to get to the bottom of the key in order for the hammer to strike the string. But the way that you get to the bottom really matters. So if you if you want to do it softly, you can't just hit it really fast. You kind of have to. It's it's a really it's involved. <laughs> it takes years and years and our touch is great. Like that, that right there, that, that little tight, like that dynamic range on a piano is really, really, really hard to achieve. Her touch is great. I love that. Okay, so in the beginning, when she when she does that, it's a really small mouth opening, and it's a higher larynx. It's very gentle. With a heavy heart. And then she uses like really like a ha 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 versus ha, ha right that wider that wider mouth gives it that brassy tone. such a good musician holy crap wow her uh, like i talk about a lot of her dynamic range on the piano but her dynamic range on the mic is also incredible and it's actually really interesting because not only do you, you usually have compression on a microphone when you sing um so this is like kudos to this whoever's doing the sound that's a dynamic microphone which means it's got more range you usually use dynamic microphones when you're going live because condensers pick up a little bit too much. So that's a dynamic mic, so it's already got a wide dynamic range. But you almost certainly have a compressor on that somewhere in the signal chain. Um, but it's not so much compression that you cannot tell what it is she's doing. Additionally, even if you have dynamic control, one of the ways that you can make like a high compression situation work is to do exactly what she's doing and morph the frequencies of the vowels. So and she's doing that with her mouth shape. She's making it wider, she's making it tinier, and you can hear that when she's wider, it's brassier, and when she's rounding her lips, it's smoother. And that's a great way to play with dynamics with tone. I can do Come on now. Her humming is amazing. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh man oh that's good okay so she goes from the flute free flowing like a lot of chord extensions and like you know ninth chords and all this stuff and really smooth and all that and then i don't know how like it's probably just a lot of rehearsal time but she just joins in with that drummer like boom her she's just on point and they just kick it live that's just so hard to do to be that tight with your with your band is so difficult. This is amazing to me. Me. 
right? Like you just don't care. Like, who thinks to do that in a phrase? Like, that's so cool. Who thinks to do, like, look at all that mouth shape nonsense. Like you just don't care. That's amazing. The other thing, too, is that that was a, a cricoid tilt, a belt. And having dynamic control on a belt is extremely, extremely difficult. So if we if we get like, here's what the two sound like. So this is a thyroid tilt. This is more traditional and more classical. Uh, a lot more dynamic control when you use a thyroid tilt. When you belt, and I don't belt terribly well, so I'm not going to try and demonstrate that. And I certainly can't belt and have like a lot of dynamic control. Belting is really, really hard to have dynamic control because what a cricoid cartilage tilt does is it really thickens the folds. And we measure sound in what's called sound pressure. We level volume in what's called sound pressure level, SPL, right? So when you have thick folds like this, and there's a pressure that builds up behind those thick folds because they're thick. If they're thin, that pressure gets released much faster, right? But those thick folds allow breath pressure to kind of build up, which makes dyna dynamic control and belting really hard. We're lucky if we can belt and do it safely. That's hard enough. But to have dynamic control, that's an insane amount of breath control. It's nuts. It's really hard to do. That's nuts. That's really hard. <laughs> like, oof. So, um, practice your scales, um, or, or actually someone in a YouTube comment, like when I, when I was like, this is why you practice your scales to do stuff like that. Someone in the comments actually said something interesting. They're like, I didn't know, I didn't do scales. I just, you know, copied the trumpet player in my church and copied a bunch of other runs. Um, and that's actually really smart. That's called transcription it's easier for singers to do we don't have to write down the notes we just kind of slowly try to copy a run it's way more musical but hey scales are great i love scales and we use them often <sighs> so one of the reasons i think people struggle with with runs is actually it's kind of Runs become easy once your fundamentals are really good. Um, to do a good run, you need to have very gentle breath because you need you need the folds also to be really thin because they need to move really fast, right? If they're big, that's not going to move quickly. If they're tiny, they can move really fast and between notes, et cetera, et cetera. But the hardest part to make, um, the hardest part to do of a run to make it all sound consistent is to work with your vowels. And... There are, you know, a good vowel, a good comfortable vowel on any given pitch allows you to kind of create resonance, right? You can you can morph what it sounds like, but also it just helps you physically pull it off if you have good vowels. And there's a range of good vowels that you can have, um, but it takes a while to find out how to do those things. So not only is her are her breath is her breath and vowels like really good, but it's also that she knows like how to change like tons of tone through changing the vowels in this run. There's layers to this. Right? You hear how she goes to that low and it's like a more neutral vowel and then she changes when she goes up? Like, 
<laughs> it's, it's like, this is what I mean when I say like runs have to be musical. Everyone just gets like, oh, that run was really fast. But this is insane. This is so good. It's so good because it's it's incredibly phrased. It's not just a bunch of notes. It's music. I don't know if she's signaling to the band or whatever there, but man, I think the best thing you could do, anyone who's watching this and wants to improve, I would slow down the video because you can do that on YouTube, which is awesome that you can slow it down so that like go piece by piece over what she's doing and just kind of test out what, what she's doing with the vowels. Everyone has a different mechanism, so you have to train vowels not in like a rigid, rigid way. You kind of have to experiment with a bunch of stuff. And this sort of stuff is amazing to try and copy. Don't get frustrated if you can't do what she's doing. I, very few people can. <laughs> but it, it's a wonderful opportunity to practice. That's so hard. I, can't, I just can't get enough of her piano playing. When you go up top on, and this is not for keyboard players or anything like this, is if you have a baby grand or a bigger piano, then you can get this dynamic control. Um, you basically need a baby grand or, or larger, unfortunately, to really play piano the way that it was intended where all of these soft little things matter. When you get up to the higher notes on a piano, you have to hit them a certain way or they sound incredibly painful and abrasive. And the way she goes up here with like, you know, there's a lot of dexterity in that, like moving your hand and your fingers in such a way. So it's hard to just do that motion, but then also like as you're like tailing off with the hand, also like just touch that note in such a way that it's not abrasive. That's really tough. Listen to this high note on the piano. You hear all the different sound qualities that she's getting out of a piano. Literally to do that, every pianist I know who's ever trained that, they're just sitting at the keyboard, like pressing a note, a bunch, and just kind of feeling it out. Maybe they're playing the chord and testing each end, a little finger to give a little emphasis. Like it's so nuanced, it takes such a long time. What? How much lung capacity can an individual actually have? I thought I knew the answer until now. That is, what was that? That was a good, like, 20 seconds. So, you'd imagine that um, holding onto a higher note is more impressive than holding onto a lower note, and there is truth to that. You can't really hold on to a note for a really long time until you're extremely comfortable on that note with all different permutations of whatever vowels you're going to use. So yes, that is impressive, but what, what makes it a little easier to sustain on a high note is that high notes take less air. But then you have another problem, because how do you use less air? Well, in some cases, not only do you have to take a smaller inhale, but you also have to suspend stuff so that your, your torso isn't contracting, therefore expelling more air. So this is uh, hard. I don't know if anyone needed to hear that out of my mouth, but this is really difficult to do. But I 
and I want to listen to it again because I'm selfish. Throughout the entirety of that note, she's going with a slight like, ah, to kind of like make it interesting and develop and different. You can't, there's no such thing in singing as holding a note. You have to keep that note alive because if you don't, you'll probably go flat because you're like trying to take it easy. Like this has to be alive and holy crap, is it alive? That's that kind of moment. If I were a smoker, I'd be like, I need to, I need a cigarette. Luckily, I didn't get into nicotine. Don't do drugs, kids. I love it. Okay, so the the arpeggiated notes going up and all that stuff, that's really cool. But like her her manipulation of tone is incredible. So in that first sustained high note, it started out with some false full contraction to give a little distortion. Then she let go of it to make her sustaining of the note more comfortable. Then, you know, more incredible, insane, mind-blowing runs with some arpeggiation at the top, which means not just uh, uh, moving up by step, but moving up by leap. So a step would be do, re, mi, fa, so, do, re, no, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, right? That would be by step. By leap would be do, mi, so, right? Anything that's larger than a step. And she has the musicianship to know where she is and, and how she can, you know, what scales and arpeggios she can use and what chords. It's really musically intelligent, but it's this little bit at the end that's giving me life here. She is using vocal fry. So if you go, ah, that's your folds just kind of going lax and going, right? Um, don't try to do it high. It's dangerous unless you really know how to do it. But if you do it low, you can just do what she did, which is clever. I never would have thought to do this. Right there. It expresses this hesitation, like, ah, it caused you pain. You know what I mean? Like, how many times have you heard that when someone's, like, hesitant? Uh, I don't know. Right? Brilliant. Like, 500 IQ. Let me tell you all, oh, you had me be She's got so much soul, you know? Like, you, you could totally believe every word of this. So often, you know, on this channel, we talk about vocal technique and, you know, it's a worthwhile topic, but like the thing to me that makes this so compelling is her musicianship and the soul she brings into it, the feels that she brings into it. Like her timing is insane. Her tone is insane. Her choice of run scales and arpeggios are insane. Like 
she's she, like music is not a difficult thing for Rachel Farrell. Clearly, she is on top of her musicianship. And because of that, and also the fact that she has stellar technique, like you get and you just everything's like perfectly available to her for unlimited, seemingly unlimited amounts of like self-expression. And she doesn't like the amount of singers that I see who have like perfect technique, but I don't care to listen to is just off the charts. Like everyone learns to do the little tricks and then they're happy with that, but they never learn how to like have something to say. They never, they're just not like interesting people. Maybe I don't know what it is, but like she is saying something here and it is gorgeous. Okay, we're going to talk about that that use of the false folds here. Um, the false folds are like right here. They're located above the real vocal folds, and they come together usually when you cough. <coughs> you can kind of feel that contraction if you just kind of hold the cough and you don't do it. Um, but so usually the false folds, if they contract while you're singing, you're either going to go flat or it's going to be massively uncomfortable. And so what she does is she she uses the false folds, but with incredibly soft dynamics so that she can get the distortion without going flat and without hurting herself. There. Just for like a split second. For the real vocal folds to do that kind of like really rough friction stuff is not a good idea because you're probably going to injure yourself. The uh, vocal folds are just like tiny little pieces of flesh and in a woman they're generally like the size of a dime put together. Very tiny, very fragile little things. The false folds are not. They're very durable. I believe they're actually pieces of cartilage. Don't quote me on that. But because they're a lot more durable, you can kind of do that with them to create that grind sound because it's literally what's happening. And it's safe and it's fine. You just have to be careful because it will affect the real folds. It's really good. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm done. I'm done. What the hell? Don't demonetize me. This is insane. Not because it's a long held note. I don't care about that. I mean, I do. It's really good. It's really cool. But it's the dynamics. Just like, so when you're at, it is actually harder to be quiet and have good vocal technique. It is, vi that is much harder. Because if you if you're louder, you can kind of force some things through. But if you're if you're really quiet and really tiny, you can't force anything. It has to be right on the money. And she just holds that, and it's the time. Like I've heard crescendos, right? We've all heard like, ah, right? Like something blooms, right? But look at listen, just how long she can, and just how the gradation from pianissimo the quietest to like that it's just so smooth and like a little bit of gradation little bit, little bit, do, 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 over a really long period of time to go from piano to, to forte it's it's so hard because she's not just going like pianissimo she's going pianissimo to pianissimo like a little bit more pian like just a little bit 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 it's so hard to have that fine control to where you're moving things literally less than millimeters 
literally less than millimeters, you're moving them gradually, 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 gradually to get that volume. That precision is mind boggling. It's not fair. <laughs> This is insane. A little bit of vibrato. Just coming in there. Boom. Still my heart. Holy crap.